So church, who is God? God, he is internal. God, he is independent. God, he is a sufficient being. He is the God whose purposes, whose action, they spring from himself only, needing no support, needing no motivation, or no, any action from anything or any influence from age, anything or, or from any person. He is a God who is absolute in dominion. He is a God who is most pure. He is God who is most faithful, most simple. He is God who is most spiritual in all essences. This God he is a God who is true. He is a God who is holy. He is a God who is insufficiently perfect. He is a God who is infinitely eternal. And he is a God who needs nothing that he has created. Now, when we look at the greatest purpose of man, towards God is only to glorify God. Now, when we look at this word glory from the Greek New Testament, we found the word doxa. The word doxa, it means opinion, it means estimation, it means reputation of that thing which is which one held towards that other thing or towards that other person. This word doxa, it refers to that which we accrue to God as praise, which we accrue to God as thanksgiving, as obedience, as reverence, or that which we accrue to God as service because of who God is and what God does in our lives in this world. It can be in the present, it can be in the past, and also it can be in the future. Now, when we talk about glorifying God, Glorifying God, it is attached with our knowledge of God. You cannot say that you glorify God when you don't have any knowledge of God. You cannot glorify God when you do not believe in God, when you do not believe that he exists. The glory of God, giving glory to God, it is always based or tied in the knowing of God and not only knowing God, but knowing God personally. Who is this God that I'm talking about today? In Genesis chapter 22, verse number 14, he revealed himself as Yahweh Jireh. This means that the Lord will provide. He is the God who provides for his people whatever that we need of, this God will provide. In Exodus chapter 3, verse number 14, God from the burning bush, he revealed himself as the I am who I am. He is the God who is prepared to be everything that we need him to become. He is the God who is everywhere, the God who is all-powerful. He is the God who is all-knowing. There is nothing which is lacking in this God. In Exodus chapter 17, verse number 15, he revealed himself as Yahweh Nisi, meaning he is God, our banner. He is our protector. He is our refuge. He is our hiding place. He is our comfort. He is our means of victory. He is the God who fights for his people. In Judges chapter 6, verse number 24, he revealed himself as Yahweh Shalom, meaning he is the Lord, our peace. He is the means of peace. He is the means of our rest. In the midst of our storms, he is the God who gives us peace, and not only just peace, but peace which surpasses all understanding. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse number 3, he revealed himself as Yahweh Sabbath, meaning he is the Lord of hosts. He is the commander of the heavenly forces. He is the Lord who is great and mighty in battle. He is the Lord who fights our battles because our battles does not belong to us. They belong unto God. And in Psalm chapter 23, verse number 1, he revealed himself as Yahweh Roi, meaning he is the Lord, our shepherd. He is the God who cares for us as his sheep. And this God, he always leads us only into the greener pastures. When we are with him, when we are in him, we don't fear anything and we lack nothing. Now, who is this God church? He is the very present help in time of need. This God he is a God who is abundantly available when we need help. He is a God who is available when we are in distress, when we are in trouble. He is the God who is abundantly available whenever we need him, whenever we need assistance, whenever we are in agony. In John chapter 10, verse number 10, he said, I have come that them have life and have it in abundance. Who is this God that I'm talking about? In Psalm chapter 91, verse number 5, he is the God who says, You shall not be afraid of terror by night, nor of the arrow flying by day. 
in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse number 12, he is the God who says, Then you shall call on me, and you shall go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. In Jeremiah chapter 33, verse number 3, he is the God who says, Call to me, and I will answer you, and show you great things and difficult which you do not know. Who is this God? John chapter 1, verse number 1, it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Before anything was formed, before anything was created, before God began his great work of creation, the word existed. The Logos he existed. This Logos is a light which shines to all the men who cometh unto this world. This Logos that I'm talking about, he is the fountain of all the wisdom. He is the fountain which gives life, a fountain which gives light, a fountain which gives knowledge, a fountain which gives reason to all the men. He is not only the fountain, but he is our savior. He is the bread of life. He is the rose of Sharon. He is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the one who came so that we may have life and have it in abundance. He is the lifter of our souls. He is the comforter when we are broken. He is the remover of our yokes. And he is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the only God who laid down his life on the cross for us so that we must be saved. And still today, the same God, he is calling on us to repent for our sins. He is calling on us to seek his face, to call on him so that he can restore us back where we belong, that is back into the hands of the Father. Who is this God church? He is the Alpha and the Omega. This is the God I'm talking about. He is the beginning and the end. This God, he was there in the beginning and this God, he will exist forevermore. There is no day, no time, no way that he will stop to exist. He will be there. He has no beginning. He has no end. He was there since the world was created. He's going to be here even when the world is ended. He is the God who is from everlasting to everlasting. He is the God whose presence needs nothing to support it. He is the God who will always be around to look after his creation. And we understand that he is not only the God who is the beginning and the end, and he is also the God who never changes. In the book of Malachi chapter 3 verse number 6, he said that, For I am the Lord, I change not. You see, church, if anything changes, that thing, it must change for better or for worse. We cannot say that something has changed when we don't see any difference in that thing. For something to be said that it has changed, we must see a difference. We must see something new, something better or something changed. It is then that we can talk about change in that person. Now, since God he is perfect, since God he does not need anything to support him or to make him to exist, God will never change. God will never get any better because God is always perfect. God will never get any worse because he is a loving God. He is a true God. He is a faithful God. Now, because God he is omniscient, he cannot learn something new because he is a God of all wisdom. He is a God who is all-knowing. He is a God who possesses all the knowledge that you cannot possess in your entire life. Now, when we look at this God, we read that he is a God who is unchangeable in his being. His love for you and me, it is eternal. In Jeremiah chapter 31, verse number 3, he said that, I have loved you with an everlasting love. This God, his mercy never stops. His, never, his mercy never ceases. His mercy will never end. Why? Because the mercy of God, it is for everlasting. He will, there will never be a day that he will never become or stop to become a God of mercy. God will never contradict himself. He will never act in any way that compromises his character or his attribute. His mercy is everlasting. He will never change. And secondly, we read that God, he is unchangeable in his purposes. This God, he says, my purpose for you will always stand and I will do all that I please. Whatever that God has purposes for you, 
God will do that. Whatever that God has declared that he will do in your life, God will do it. Whatever that God says you will become through his word, you will become so. God will always do everything that he pleases him. God promises for you, church, it will always stand. There is no promise which God has promised you that will never come to pass in your life. And thirdly, we found that God, he is unchangeable in his promises. Numbers chapter 23, verse number 19, it says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. God does not lie. God is not a God, he's not a human being that could change a mind. A man can say something today and tomorrow change his mind. But if God declares something, it is for good, it is for eternity. God will never change his mind. The promises of God for your life, they will stand and I'm telling you, they will come to pass. Now, who is this God? He is a God who can do all things. There is nothing impossible with this God. He is the God who possesses all the power. All the power belongs to God. That is why nothing will ever be impossible to God. All things are possible with this God. He is the God who is able to judge. He is the God who is able to forgive sins. He is the God who is able to save us. He is the God who is able to overcome our enemies. He is the God who is able to deliver us. He is the God who is able to protect us. He is the God who is able to give us grace. He is the God who is able to make us to stand where others are falling. He is the God who makes us to get results where others are failing. He is the God who is able to raise the dead. He is the God who provides everything in your life. And he is the God who gives us the power and the authority to carry out the great commission of Jesus Christ. This is the God that I'm talking about. Now the first thing that we must do in the light of the power of God is to obey God, is to fear God, is to honor God. It is to follow God, to do everything that pleases this God. You see, when we recognize that the Bible says this God is the God of all the power, is the God who can do anything, is the God who is able to deliver, to save, and to heal, it means that we must remove the word impossible from our vocabulary. If really we are the children of God and our Father in heaven can do anything, it means that nothing must be impossible to us. Everything must also be possible to us. Why? Because we have a Father who will give us whatever we ask of Him. We must remove impossible from our, from our tongue, from our language, from our mouth. For God can do all things. Our weaknesses, whatever weakness that you are facing, it is not a barrier for God to help you. Even though when we recognize our weaknesses, our weaknesses must be the source of encouragement to move us closer to God, to seek God more, to rely and to trust on this God. Why? Because we need the power of God for us to overcome our weaknesses. On our own, we cannot overcome our weaknesses, but God, through his grace, through his love and mercy, he can give us the grace we need to overcome every weaknesses, every temptations, every difficulties that we are facing in this life. And as I conclude, this God, he is a God who is alive. He is a God who is true. He is a God who is unique. He is a God who is alive. And through our faith in Jesus Christ, he becomes our personal father. He becomes the father that we need. He becomes the husband to the widows. He becomes the father to the fatherless. That is why we need to rely on this God. We need to believe in this God. We need to trust in this God. We need to look upon this God. We must seek his face day and night. We must search him through reading the scriptures. And we must love him forever now. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6 says what? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. You cannot make it without God. You need God who will direct you. You need God who will lead you. You need God who will protect you, who will be your shade. You need God who will take you to the greener pastures. 
You need God who will prevent you from making mistakes. You need a God who will pick you up after you have fallen. You need a God who will do things right in your life. You need God who will correct you when you are wrong. 